Hey guys and welcome to another Asian Mythology video. In this video we're going to be covering the Norse Myth Unit. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. So since the Norse gods are some of my favourite to play aside from the Greek gods, I decided I would do them next for the Myth Unit face-off in the challenges and such. I'll be comparing these Norse Myth Units per age in various challenges, which I'll give them a score for per challenge, and then I'll show you guys the total score of each of the Myth Units in the challenges. Please keep in mind that these are not 100% accurate challenges, and you may have to take scores with a grain of salt, because in player versus player combat, there are things like kiting and micro management that can make a certain myth unit better than another myth unit. Starting off with the classical age units being the Troll, Valkyrie and Einher Jar, we have a 1v1 versus each other for the first round. Out of this round, the Valkyrie comes on top, then the Troll and then the Einher Jar. Now the troll barely wins from the Einherjar, jar, but if you use the troll's range, you can actually kite it around if you're a good player. I'm, I'm pretty average, probably even a bad player, so I can't do it properly. But then in a 1v1 scenario, which is kind of unlikely depending on how you play, the troll can survive with much more life points left. And if you're using another unit to kite around the Einherjar, jar, if the other person or bot is micromanaging the actual unit, you can kite him around using that unit while attacking him constantly using the troll's range. In the second round, they'll be facing off against their kryptonite being hero units, in this case, a classical age Greek hero called Hippolyta, or Hippolyta. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that properly, but, all the units get absolutely decimated, but the unit that did the most damage was again the Valkyrie. In second place, the Einher Jar, and in last place, the Troll. Next up, we have something a viewer of the previous Greek video suggested, being a fight with a little army. In this case, five Ulsvarks and three Furring Axemen on each side, and then I'll just let them do what they gotta do. In this case, we'll be doing a best out of three, so they'll be fighting three times, and then the winner gets three points, second place two points, and last place gets one point. And the Valkyrie comes out on top, even healing her units after actually finishing off the fight. Island Jar gets second place, and the Troll gets last place yet again, only winning one of the fights, actually. And for the final challenge, it's to see which of the Myth units with the little army destroys the building the fastest. And to no surprise, the Einher Jar is the fastest, followed by the Valkyrie, and then followed by the Troll. Now the Einher Jar's special ability is pretty good, especially when having large armies, because it increases their attack and it does minor damage against nearby enemies. However, the Valkyrie does come out on top in these tests overall with a score of 11, and it's also a pretty useful unit to heal your other myth units when you're not in a battle, so I think the win is fair. Next up, the Heroic Age units being the Frost Giant, Battle Boar, and Mountain Giant. Now, to no surprise, the Frost Giant is just freezing the Battle Boar and Mountain Giant and just going ham, as you can see on the video. Could have been expected, you know, the Frost Giant is a very powerful 1v1 myth unit against any myth unit in the game. The Battle Boar against the Mountain Giant clearly loses. And in the end, because of the freeze, the Mountain Giant and Battle Boar both lose against the Frost Giant, meaning in a 1v1 scenario, the Frost Giant does come out on top compared to the Battle Boar and Mountain Giant. Next up, we have the Myth Units against Heroes, in this case being Atalanta again, a Heroic Age Myth Unit from the Greek Gods. Now, all of these three units are going to get annihilated, but you might be interested in which unit does the most amount of damage against the Myth unit before going down, and in this case, that is the Mountain Giant because of its large health pool. Second place, Battle Boar because of its rapid attacks, and last place because he can't freeze the hero, the poor little Frost Giant. Now, in the previous video, I got a suggestion to test the Myth units with upgraded units of the same age, so, you know, medium infantry with all the upgrades in the armory except for the special upgrades costing favor with the myth unit against each other to make it more accurate however while playing against myself with a laptop to set up fights i was getting a huge amount of lag so it was literally unplayable at some point so I decided to just take tier 1 units with no upgrades instead. Also, I would have just done it in the editor using the triggers to upgrade the units, but for some reason with my resolution and all that stuff, it's completely bugged and I cannot select any triggers. It's really weird, but it is what it is, I guess. 
So as for the challenge versus each other plus units, best out of three, the Frost Giant still comes out on top with the Mountain Giant coming in a close second and the Battle Boar being last place yet again. Now, as for the next challenge, I did just say that I couldn't get things upgraded in the actual editor because the triggers are bugged for me. I've been playing around for like an hour trying to fix it, but it just didn't want to work. So here it is against the hill fort. However, once in melee range, they cannot fight back. So take everything here with a grain of salt. It's just to test the building damage of each of these three units. Now the mountain giant absolutely mashes through the building with no upgrades. The battle boar comes in second and the frost giant takes its time because it isn't as good against buildings. So overall the mountain giant does come out on top and when combined with an army it's a very powerful myth unit. Good against buildings, good against units. Good against heroes, I guess, because of its large health pool, but it will go down if it's on its own. The Battle Boar is a pretty weak unit compared to the other two ones. But if you have multiple of these summoned or used with your Hearse Seers with Loki, they will definitely do some damage against the base. As for the Frost Giant, it's really good against units and against other myth units one-on-one, -on -one, but it really lacks in doing siege damage and fighting hero units. Now on land, the Norse only have two Mythic Age Myth units, being the Fire Giant and Fenris Wolf Brood, but I will be covering how the Frost Giant and Mountain Giant compare to these units in a couple of tests as well. In a 1v1 scenario, the Fire Giant destroys the Fenris Wolf Brood, but the Wolf does get extra damage when in a pack. So I did a 5v5 to see if that would make a difference. However, the Fire Giants are just too powerful and they destroy the Wolf Pack. However, if these Wolves were combined and fighting normal units, they would do a lot of damage and destroy a bunch of units by themselves. Now like I've said before, every myth unit has their strength and weakness, however from these tests the fire giant is clearly superior. For the next challenge they will be facing off against a heroic age hero which completely annihilates them of course, but the fire giant lasts way longer and deals a lot more damage. Now funnily enough, if you were to add the frost giant and mountain giant, the mountain giant is still better than a non-upgraded fire giant versus heroes, probably because of its large health pool. Next up we have a round with a bunch of units, again non-upgraded because I didn't want to go through all the lag and have choppy footage for you guys, so we're just doing this with tier 1 units, no upgrades, to see which would win with a little army, best out of 3. And again, the Fire Giant comes out on top, destroying these units, of course, because they're tier 1 units. Next up, we have a challenge versus a hill fort. Now, funnily enough, you can see the Fire Titan getting attacked because it is a ranged unit, which is good to see. But a Fire Giant will absolutely annihilate a hill fort, with no upgrades, of course. And the Mountain Giant and Frost Giant are here for a later scoreboard, which we'll be seeing. Now the wolf won't do much against buildings because that's just how it is. It isn't made to use on buildings. It's good against units, not against buildings. And for the final official round, I just wanted to test them against 10 Mermilio because I did that with my Greek myth units as well. And I might make a comparison after I've done all the gods or faction types of all the myth units. And then this will be a nice comparison to see which of them is the best alone against 10 Mermilio. The Chimera or Chimera actually killed all 10 Mermilio with one HP left. And as you can see, the Fire Titan also ends up killing all of them. However, the Wolf, of course, doesn't by itself. Now in actual gameplay, I'm pretty sure the Fire Giant is also superior compared to the Wolf Brood as I've used both. And the Fire Giant just really is a very powerful unit. Overall, it beats the Fenris Wolf Brood in all of the tests. Now, if you were to add the Frost Giant and Mountain Giant to the mix to some of the tests, this is what the score would be. As you can see, tier for tier or age for age, the Fire Giant and the Mountain Giant are almost as good, and the Mountain Giant might even be better age for age, aka tier for tier, because it's a heroic age unit and the Fire Giant is a mythic age unit, meaning it will be encountering stronger units than the Mountain Giant, depending on how far your opponent is in the game. But yeah, pretty interesting to see in my opinion. Now I did also test the water myth units, being the Jormund Elver and the Kraken of course, non-upgraded. And they're both pretty good. I'd say the Kraken overall is better because it's a lower tier unit and it just does so much. It has an instant kill special ability and it also can do things to units on land by throwing them away. 
Now, in the previous video, I did test the Greek unit as well, but I really want to keep these units for an overall comparison of all the water units in Asian mythology for the future. But both of these units have their strengths and weaknesses, of course. The German Elva is very powerful against other ships and will destroy them pretty quickly, but it's pretty weak against docks and almost does no damage, while the Kraken can actually destroy docks rather quickly. As for hero units, it can of course encounter a ranged hero unit which will do a lot of damage against both of these myth units, but I took the hero ship here and the Jormund Elver does do a lot of damage against the hero ship despite it being a hero, but it does end up getting killed and so does the Kraken. Now the crushing ships, for example, Drakars are better against naval myth units, but they still, without upgrades of course, do get destroyed by the Kraken and Jormund Elver. As for killing units on land, both of them are very good, however the Jormund Elver can actually attack the units from a further raid range, while the Kraken can only get them if they're in melee distance, like in the campaign mission for example. And the Jormund Elver is surprisingly good at shredding through units on land, I was not expecting it to be this good, just rest in peace those hoplites man. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, please leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing if you want to see more. And if you have any suggestions for future testing or little challenges, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.